Welcome to Ericsson Imagine Live from Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. It's amazing to be here again and to have you with us for this show. Don't forget to put your questions in the chat so we can come back and answer them later in the show. But in the meantime, I'm going to hand over to our president and CEO, Boye Ekholm. Thank you, Matt. It's really great to be here again at Mobile World Congress. And today, I want to talk about the importance of our industry, but also about how our industry can reclaim value and grow again. Our founder, Lars Magnus Eriksson, believed that connectivity is a basic human need. And if we fast forward, we can see how much our industry has changed the world. It's the most democratic and inclusive technology the world has ever seen with 8.5 billion subscriptions worldwide. There is no more affordable and cost-efficient technology. It connects and empowers everyone. In fact, the recent digitalization decade has been driven by mobile connectivity. Just think about the everyday transformation from the app economy during the last decade of digitalization and we can expect 5G to drive this even more. Our industry continues to evolve, and our networks are becoming more resilient, open, sustainable, and intelligent. Our cloud run portfolio provides flexible deployment options to our customers, and is one of the key steps towards a more open architecture that can leverage cloud as well as AI for automation. Our industry has a key assets in our unique global scale with 8.5 billion subscriptions. We as an industry need to work together and continue to harmonize network specifications as part of one global set of standards. This will deliver the best performance, enable innovation, while maintaining our unique global scale. We partner with leading technology companies to bring these, these benefits to our customers towards industry-scale Open RAN. One of the key players in making the evolution to industry-scale Open RAN happen is our long-term partner, Intel. And I'm very happy to have here today the CEO of Intel, Pat Gelsinger. Pat. It's great to see you. Hey, Bore, thank you for letting me join your keynote at Mobile World Congress and you know, being here together to talk about the great stuff that we're doing. You know, Bore, as we think about this moment in history, you know, everything is becoming more digital. And I've described what I call the five superpowers that are, that are enabling that digitization of everything. Everything computes. Right? You know, with the edge and cloud, we have infrastructure. Right? Everything is taking advantage of AI. We can now sense where you are and everything about you and see and feel. But the most important, connectivity. Everyone and everything is becoming connected. But to make that connectivity truly pervasive, we have to change the network. We have to cloudify and turn to software that network so that we can truly deliver it at scale. Right? And as 5G deployments are now happening and as we look forward to you know, private 5G and 6G, you know, this cloudification, this turning the network soft is becoming so critical to our future. And that requires the deep collaboration of industry players like you and I. You're absolutely right. I, and the whole leveraging cloud and AI for automation is going to be critical in the future. And the flexibility of deploying the networks are really going to be important. So let us learn a bit more about your product portfolio. Uh, thank you. And I love talking about our products. And what we have right here, in fact, is the next generation of the Intel Xeon processor or our fourth gen Xeon scalable processor. But this one's special, right? It has the Intel VRAN Boost technology as part of it. And essentially you have the software, right, that we just keep getting faster and faster with Moore's Law, but we also accelerate the key functions required to make the network perform. And this provides, I'll say, the magic of performance, right? And every generation we're doubling the performance, but also power efficiency as well. And to us, that's the magic, right? That we truly can scale in software, but we can accelerate for maximum power efficiency as well. Of course, we're excited to run our cloud run on, on the CEO processor, but it also shows 
how versatile the software is and how well we can port. But what I think is, is actually also interesting and important is the, the view we have on performance as well as power consumptions as really key features of the network of the future. And we're convinced of that as well. So I think the collaboration with Intel is really critical to drive the whole industry towards an industry scale open RAN. And of course, that's an important cooperation on, on your chip. But equally important is actually the work we do in the Open RAN Alliance to start to harmonize standards across the different ecosystems. And I think benefiting of the global scale is going to be critical for innovation, for performance, as well as for developing the, the network of the future. And, you know, it's so important what we do right together, but it's even more important how we bring the industry along, how we enable that broad ecosystem. Because you know, as strong as we are, you know, we can't do this alone, right? We need that participation, that effort of the ecosystem. And I am so happy to be doing that with you. Yeah, we are very excited, of course, about our technology lab, the Ericsson Intel Technology Lab. That's important. But just as you said, what may be more important is to form the whole ecosystem. So what we do in the open lab together with 30 customers and partners to drive innovation on cloud as well as virtualization, I think is really important. Well, thank you for joining me. It's great to see you as always. Thank you, Borre. That was really great. And I'm going to be talking to three experts now about some key topics. Let me start with Savane. Hello. Hey, how are you Good doing, Matt? Good to see you again. To see you. Great yeah. to see you. So, Vonage became part of Ericsson recently. Can you tell me, you know, what does that acquisition really bring to our customers, but to other audiences as well? Yeah, so it's been uh, about seven months since the acquisition. Very exciting seven months. Since that time, what we have uh, done is we've actually enabled that vision that we brought ourselves together on, which was how do we take network APIs, which is, I know, a lot of conversation happening in Mobile World Congress this year. How do we take network APIs and make that a reality? How do we actually unlock the power of the network, the 5G investments that a lot of the customers, the, the CSP customers have made over the past few years? How do we unlock the value inside of that? You know, it's, it's fascinating as uh, we were doing some more uh, research on this. Release 15 and 16 came out in 2015 and 2016. Uh, which introduced the concept of the SCEF and the NEF, which were the components of network functions which could be enabled to create value, like quality of service, like network slicing, like uh, device data, et cetera. It's been seven years. Yeah. And really nothing has happened since then. And one of the reasons nothing really happened in terms of unlocking it was because these are complex services. How do you take this complexity and simplify it for developers worldwide? And by the way, there are no... 5G developers that I know of. Mm. There are no developers who themselves come out and say, yeah, I'm, I'm a 5G developer. I don't think there are many like that. There are web developers and there are mobile developers. And yes, in the future, there'll be more X, uh, metaverse and, and XR kind of developers. For these developers, what they need is just functionality, just simple functionality. I have a video feed. I have a telehealth application in which I'm doing a video feed. How do I make that video feed become a lot more robust, so it doesn't have any jitter, doesn't have any uh, issues in glitching. Well, you do that by taking the power of the network, things like quality of service, mm. and enabling it as if they don't have to make any changes whatsoever. Mm. They keep using whatever they're already using in mobile or in, in the web. So that's where Vonage comes in. Right, because what we are doing now is we're taking all of those network services which Ericsson's been working on with the uh, with the CSP uh, customers, and enabling that that complexity and and simplifying it so that it can be used by the millions of developers and enterprises worldwide. So ultimately, our goal is that. Users like you and I, when we are having an issue where if it's a video feed or if you want to get authenticated, we can now do that and guess where all that power comes from? From the network. But nobody will know it because it's yeah. all hidden behind the scenes. Really amazing. I mean, you fascinated me from the beginning and I'm going to take you right back to that, I'm afraid, because you, you worked with developers for years, mm -hmm. big communities um, that kind of work on top of a platform. Um, but for the telco audience, is our, our main audience here today, right. um, you know, maybe the term network APIs 
is a bit unusual. So yeah. how would you best um, sort of introduce that to them? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, it's almost like, think of compute and storage, right? The analogy that I give is when, uh, when the cloud hyperscalers started, the Amazons and the Googles of the world, they started early in the, uh, in the 2000s and even before that potentially, you don't really have a term for uh, was called the compute or the storage services. These were things which were static. But now you can add a compute service, you can add a node, you can add a storage node, and you don't ever have to worry about where that's happening. Well, network has to happen like that. The extensibility of the network has to happen the same way. The services underneath, things like the quality of service I mentioned earlier, which has been around for a long time, but again, not being commercialized. Uh, device data, that's an API which sits inside the network. And by the way, there's a lot of great work happening in standardization as well with Kamara, which is doing this work of taking all the components of the APIs and standardizing it so they can be consumed by people like us and we can create an open platform for anybody to come in and build on. So the network APIs are really just functions of the network, which are now exposed as, as standardized API endpoints. An API is just an application programmable interface. That's all it is, which basically means you're taking a function and now you are making it accessible to millions of people and doing that in a standardized way. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. I really appreciate the explanation. I'm sure everybody else does as well. Thank you so much. Now, if anyone has any more questions, later in the show, you could ask the Ericsson CTO some more on this subject as well. So take advantage of that. Leave your comments in the chat. Thank you so much, Savane. I'm going to see you soon. Enjoy the care. show. Absolutely. Take care. Thanks. And now I'm going to talk to Sivelle. Hello. Hi, man. About 5G monetization. And that is probably the hottest topic at the event this year. And my question is going to be, what kind of use cases are you going to be talking about and sharing at this event? So 5G, as you know, Matt, is the first wireless technology that brings applications beyond mobile broadband. And we already see early applications and early indications that 5G revenue is actually increasing in the top uh, 20 5G markets, and mainly driven by the high-performance 5G networks. So what we are seeing today is that fixed wireless access and early applications of slicing are the main drivers of this revenue growth. And for example, in the US, fixed wireless access subscribers grew from 800,000 to 4 million in just one year. Wow. And going forward, we see a lot of applications and very interesting applications around consumers and the enterprises, mainly enabled by advanced slicing, XR, AR, and also positioning. And here in Barcelona, we have a lot of exciting uh, demos with our partners, with Google, with Meta, with Microsoft, Google, and, and, and many more. So it's very, very exciting that's happening here and now. It really sounds exciting. You sound excited. Um, the question's coming from customers, you know, not just how do I monetize, but I think also what we need to explain is how can they do it? How can they change their network? What do they need to do to be able to get after these uh, new business opportunities? Correct. And it's very important. So first of all, consistent user experience will be the main driver. So we need to ensure that the user experience in the 5G networks are consistent while catering the traffic growth in their network. Mm -hmm. So this means that they need to take some actions. So first of all, they need to ensure that every macro site in their network has mid-band spectrum, because this spectrum is essential for higher performance and higher capacity. And we, as you know, has an industry-leading portfolio which will enable her for an ease of deployment with the best performing in their network. So that's the first thing they should do, meet band everywhere. Mm -hmm. Second is indoor. Majority of our time, as we know, and mobile traffic is actually generated indoors. And high-performing indoor connectivity is becoming an extremely crucial infrastructure for both consumers and also for the enterprises, which means that we need to also do something for indoor. But we also know that indoor is challenging because it's fragmented. Mm. It has different size of deployments, it has different needs, it has different business models, so it is challenging. But as you know what, actually it is changing now. We are coming very recently with three new solutions for indoor that will make it easier than ever to deploy, scale, and monetize indoor in 5G. But please tell me more about those solutions. So first of all, we are coming with a high-performing multi-operator IRU solution, which is perfect for large venues. Second, we are coming with compact plug-and-play solution that is perfect for medium and small-scale enterprises. And finally, we are coming with the industrial-leading indoor positioning solution with sub-one-meter uh, accuracy, 
that is perfect for seamless uh, tracking for the assets for any type of indirect environment. So combining all these three solutions will give opportunities to CSPs to monetize their indoor investments and uh, get the best out of 5G deployments. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for joining me. Very I'll welcome. see you soon. Take see care. You. Hi, Emily. Hello. Good to see you Hi. again. Nice Hi. to see you. Emily, there's so many fantastic topics at Mobile World Congress, too many to choose from. But surely the only one that matters really is climate action. And let's start off with what's Ericsson doing? Yeah, I think, you know, we are in a great spot because our industry cannot only work with ourselves, we can also enable other industries to do action. But if we start with ourselves, because we need to be credible, I'm really happy to say that Ericsson uh, committed to be net zero within our whole value chain by 2040. Wow. And this is a major commitment. So that basically means that we, from the 2020 levels, we will need to decarbonize 90% of our emissions until 2040, and then neutralize the remaining 10% by permanent carbon removals. But 2040 is quite a long way to go, so we have also said that you know, 2030 is our biggest milestone. We will halve the value chain emissions. We will halve what we work with supp uh, supply chain action, our own activities, and also our portfolio in use, and that's the lifetime mm. emission for that. So that's really crucial, but action now is even more crucial. So here we need to continue working with uh, lowering our embodied uh, carbon emissions of our products uh, by choosing a better design, the materials, and work with our suppliers so they also reduce their own emissions. We need to work with ourselves, and we're doing that continuously, for example, by buying renewable energy for our facilities. But then the biggest impact is the energy our products actually consuming at the end uh, during operation mm. and here we need to continue focusing on energy performance and I think one of the really cool um, uh, examples we have here is how we have um, innovated by the Ericsson Silicon um, creating this really high performing um, products uh, with that it also is lightweight so we are supposed to actually support supply chain action as well mm. but by having those products we can be more energy efficient also supporting our energy performance within the products um, in operation. And I think that's really cool. And I really hope that you have also know about our uh, breaking the energy curve concept, mm -hmm. yeah. really looking into how our customers can deploy 5G while breaking the energy curve of the mobile networks. That's excellent. You've really covered what's close to home. But I'm wondering, what can we do for broader industries and society as a whole? Yeah, I think that's that's really interesting, actually. And thanks to our Ericsson research, we know that the whole industry stands for around 1.4 of global greenhouse gas emissions. But we can enable, have the potential to enable 15% oh. across industries up to 2030 in reductions only. And that was with the legacy portfolio. So now when we add 5G, AI, IoT, we know we can do more. Um, and taking, for example, an industry case, uh, when we deployed 5G in the Port of Livorno in Italy, only in one terminal, by, opt by having 5G, we optimized the port operations and vessel berthing and reduced 8% of the carbon emission within wow. that one terminal. Wow. And that's just you know, one use case in one industry. So if you really deploy it across the industry industries, we can do more. And I think we can even go beyond this 15%. That is really excellent. It can't just be about targets, though. And I think a lot of the people in business watching this will surely realize that there are massive economic reasons to do this, as well as doing good. Exactly. And, you know, by actually looking at the energy, as we've seen, you will reduce cost. But it's actually doing more because, you know, climate change is the biggest challenge we will face this century. And we really need to act. Otherwise, we will not really have the planet we know today to live in. And I think that's really important to remember. It absolutely is. On that serious note, I need to say thank you so much. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank See you. See you later. Bye.